Hi, I'm Phil Cannon, and I'm going to show you how to catch a load of fish this winter. And it's... Right, so we're six or seven fish in now, and I think I've just up my first carp. Good size of that. And that's the power of the pellet. Right, I'm going to get straight into the fishing. If you'd like to know more about my rigs and tackle, stick around to the end. Right, I'm going to kick start my peg off. I'm going to feed around about a two pound uh, coin size of micros. I'm also going to feed some softened four mils. I don't know, 10 to 15 pellets. And this is going on my 14 metre line. And after this, I'm going to also go down back to my five metre line. I'm going to feed some uh, mainly more fours on the short line. Hopefully, hopefully look for some better sized fish. Just finding my marker on the far bank. Now I'm going to come back in and feed the five metre line. Like I say, I'm going to feed mainly, mainly four mils on this line. Probably around like 50 pellets. And just a little small ball of micros. And hopefully I'm going to catch a few carp later on this uh, short line. Again, looking up there, just looking at my marker. Got a silver birch tree in the, in the background. I'm going to let that settle now, I'm going to get myself prepared, and I'll come back to you in a minute. Right, I've let that line settle now for around about 15 minutes. I'm going to do a bit of fishing now and see how the session starts. So I'm just going to feed, I don't know, around about 15 micros in the pot. Just form them down in the bottom of the pot so they're not going to bounce out on the way out. Always keep an eye on the pot as well, you don't want it turning over the opposite side and dropping your bait in short. Lift your rig out, make sure your expander's still on. Blow your rig in, looking, at, looking straight in front of me at my mark on the far bank. Drop my rig all the way down, nice and slowly. And my float settles, turn my pot over right next to the float. Oh, didn't even get a chance to feed then. Feel like a small skimmer. Yeah, it's more skimmer. Not a bad start. You know, 10, 12 ounce skimmer. Well, we'll pre repeat the process again now. Pellets can be so effective just feeding small amounts. As you can see then, I've literally started the session, fed a few micros and some four mils, and literally I've just shipped out, blown my rigging and I've caught one straight away. So you always remember we are putting bait in at the start. You can't take it out. So always feeding small small amounts. Don't get me wrong, in the, in the summer months you can feed a lot more aggressive. But this winter fishing, it's all about getting bites, putting fish in the net. So just start off nice and gently. Then if you have to up the feed for the day, or carp move into your peg and, and they start, start eat, eating that small amount of bait you've been putting in, you can start upping the feed then. So again, just put my rig in the water now, 
let all my rigs straighten up, lower my float in, turn my pot over, hope to try and feed this time. And again, straight into fish. This one feels a little bit better. But see how effective that is straight away. Two drops. I don't think that's been two or three minutes. Two fish straight away. Just letting your peg settle sometimes. But not going on it straight away. So gives you that opportunity. Start catching the track away. These are nice size skimmers these are. And for the time of year in January, perfect weight builders. Again, just under a pound that one. It's soft pellet fishing, the conditions have got to be right. And today is just lovely. It's been flat calm, there's a little rip on the lake now. But when the lake's towing really bad, it's not really ideal for pellets. It, it's a static bait really, you want to be fishing your pellet stationary, you don't want it moving along the bottom. So, especially when you're not feeding micros, your bait could be all over the place. So the conditions have got to be right for this type of fishing. And today is perfect, just a little bit of a ripple. You're just able to see your rig, you dot everything down nicely. Try and feed again now. And um, oh, just missed the, missed the boat. Always remember, lower your rigging nice and slowly. Don't just dr drop it in like a one big heap. Lower it in. There you go. Straight away, you're into another fish. But yeah, the conditions have always got to be right with pellet fishing. And that sometimes, it, if the lake isn't towing and it is, uh, it's got a big blow on it, that's when I will swap it up to four mil pellets, just so your micros are not sweet. Your micros are not all over your peg, where four mils will go down to the bottom. Don't get me wrong, four mils will still move. Perfect pellet fish, just over a pound skimmer. Put them into my net. Let's have a look at my uh, pellet prep for you. Pellet prep. So your micros. I normally like to soak them, a bit like you would use for the method. Probably soak them for around about two minutes, just keep an eye on them. Just so they're nice, soft, soft enough to uh, squeeze into a small ball. It'll also crumble up as well, nice and easy. Got some four mils, where I've soaked for around about three to four minutes. And these have just started to go tacky now. You can squeeze them into a ball if you wanted to. They'll also break away. The reason I soak pellets for, I just like, with four mils, helps for them to sink, but also I like them to start to break down when they go on the bottom as well. Also for the fish, I think they look a little bit more natural. When the fish are coming into your peg, they look like they've been on the bottom for a while, starting to break down. Also, I don't think the fish fill up on them as much, especially when they're hard, they take a long time to break down in the fish. The process of the pellets breaking down is to stop the fish filling up. With hard pellets, it's going to take quite a while now to start breaking down in the fish. But if they've already been softened, the breakdown of the pellets starting to, um, to break up and they can digest the pellets a lot easier. So for the hook, we're using expanders and I've got here some four mils. I've also got some six mil pellets. And you might think, well these look very dry. How I prepare my pellets, um, I put them into a little clear bag. What I do, I put, I don't know, there's probably too, way too many pellets for this time of year in this bag. but. Um, I don't know, there's probably 60, 70 pellets in this bag. Put them into the corner of the bag and I literally just cover them with water. No more, literally just covering them. Put them into the corner, pull the bag tight, so all the pellets are top, really tight in the corner of the bag, into the bag. I don't want the, the expanders to expand too much. I know it sounds silly when you're fishing expander pellets, but I don't want the four mils to be a five or six mil. I want them to try and stay that four mil. Same with the six mil pellets. Some expanders can go too big, especially when you've like pumped them or you've over soaked them. So I, I try to, the reason why I put them in the bag and squeeze the bag real tight, I'm trying to keep the pellets really tight so they can't expand. And this has worked really well for me in the past. And as you can see, they've got a nice, 
nice shape to them, they haven't got too big, but also they're not breaking up and they're not falling off pellet fishing. You want to, if you miss a bite, you want to be able to drop your rig back in again. You don't want to be shipping in there all the time, especially when you're fishing like 14 metres and, and further. So the way these are, not too hard because you want them to pull through the pull through the hook and into the fish's mouth. But also you got another strike out of them, or even two. Right, so we're six or seven fish in now, and I think I've just up my first carp now. Again, there's no rush, take your time. This is what I said to you about fishing, slight elastic. Most of the time in the winter, they don't know they're upped. And this was the same, I just struck. And I'm just, just slowly bringing it in, no rush. Just plodding about, it's not doing nothing at the minute. Now it's starting to move. We gotta remember if you was fishing too heavy. A lot of them skimmers you're going to be missing or missing out on type thing, fishing too heavy. Too heavy of a hook length, bumping them with elastic. Just take your time, it's no race. A fish in the net's better than losing another fish. So down to my top kick now. I feel like the fish is under control, it's not pulling too much. It's a good sign though, you've caught a carp early in the early in the session. There's like a decent fish. Five minutes of your time playing the fish though, have a good size. It's better than wasting five minutes chasing other fish around the lake. As you can see, one of Medland's finest mirrors, and that's the power of the pellet. Nice eight to, eight to nine pound, I'd say that is. I'm going to slip this one into the uh, landing net and put them into the keep net. So it was, we started catching a few small skimmers. And I felt the peg was starting to starting to die really, so um, I topped up again two pound size um, ball of micros and I probably around about thirty to forty four mil pellets, and instantly I'm into a car. So they're responding to some bait. So now I'm going to start to look to um, change my pole pot. Start introducing a bit more bait and um, hopefully start catching a few more carp. Look at the size of that. Oh. Well, exactly what I said, light tactics. And the trusty old bean on an Evan F1. Balance tackle, you can still get these big ones out. I'd say this one's around about 13, 14 pounds. All the bait today is going to be introduced through a little pole pot. Now, I've got a little array of pole pots here. And the, the different reasons why I pick different pots, and sometimes it's mainly to stop me from feeding too much sometimes, especially in these winter months. So if you start with a bigger pot, you always tend to want to try and fill it and you end up putting more bait in than you should be. So at the start of the session I always try and tend to fish with a little pot. 
And these could be either, I don't know, 10 to 15 micros. And I tap them in and see how my session's going. But if I think I need to introduce some more bait or say small fish become a problem, when I want to start upping the feed, I'll start to go into like a small pot where I can probably put 24 mil pellets in there. But you don't have to fill the pot all the way to the top. But when you've got a big pot on, you always get a bit, bit giddy in a way. You want to start putting too much bait in and you can blow your peg pretty quick. So just fill your way in. Have a different array of pots in your, in your box. Start off with a small pot. Always nice to have some holes in the side of the pots as well. So when you ship out, you got your bait in the in the pot type thing. Especially when you're fishing like 14 metres. I like to just, just thumb it in the bottom so it's not going to bounce out the pot. When I take the pot over and then in the water, these little holes around the side will push the micros out and go straight down to the bottom. So I've just dropped on that short line for the first time and it's produced probably one of the biggest skimmers of the day. Probably just at two pound-ish. But like I said to you earlier, that short line can always produce them bigger fish because they're coming in to feed. So fishing five metres out, and this between five metres and 40 and a half metres, the depth changed around about six inches. And it's not a lot really. This short line, when it kicks in, this can be the way where your match can be won or lost. Look at that, bite straight away. Again, another decent size skimmer I'd have thought. Not as big as the last one, but again, another quick bite. Repeat the process again. A few four mils, a little pinch of micros. Again, slow your rigging nice and slow. Don't get dropping it in in a heap. Drop it down. Feed it back over the top. Bought it straight away. The fishing can't get no better than that really, can it? Another quality skimmer. Put himself in a bit of a tangle. When landing fish as well, it's always best to always keep a tight line. The fish are small enough to pick up with one hand. One hook them. And slip them back in the net nice and easy. Before you know it, we've been fishing four or five minutes on that short line now. And you got yourself four or five pound. You'll always have a quiet hour or you'll always have a better hour, so it's what you can kind of average through the day. When some venues you can look at what 60, 70 pound wins most weeks. And when you're, you're catching like you are today, you kind of, look at that, how quick that bite is then. You can kind of work out what weight you're going to get to it towards the end of the day. And the size of the skimmer's difference now, on that short line to what it was out there in the lake, not quite doubled, but... They are real good quality. Boasty one as well, this one. Look at the size of them. 
skimmers absolute love pellets. So this is my last fish of the day on the short line. Again, another quality skimmer. Short line's been really good. Hasn't produced no carp, but and the quality of the skimmers are that good. You don't need to worry about the carp. Three or four of them, and you got yourself a carp anyway. So and these these lovely skimmers coming nice and easy. So we've had a brilliant day here today at Medlands Fishery. So let's have a look at these rigs in closer detail. So rig choice for pellet fishing. I've got two rig rigs set up today. One from a short line, one from a long line. Um, we start off with the, the bottom of the rig if you like. I've got on this rig a 16 B911 F1 to 011. And then I've got strung out shot. A bit like shirt, bu shirt button style. Just under an inch, inch inch per per shot type of thing. Then going on to the main line it's 018. Then my float to 4 by 14 Cipri. And then elastic choice is an 8 to 10 zip. Then on my long line um, I've also got same same rig, same float. The hook choice is an 18 F1. Being on an 18 being on 11 F1. Um, same shotting pattern. Um, and just a 6 to 8 uh, zip elastic in the yellow. Um, on the longer line, I just prefer a soft elastic, especially when you're striking, you're catching some skimmers and odd car. Just a lot easier uh, to ship in, not going to bump too many little smaller skimmers. But also, when you do catch that rogue big car, you've also always got a chance of getting it in. For this pellet fishing, I always try to pick a slim bodied float, and that's why I'm using the Cipri today. What I like to do as well with pellet fishing, Especially now, now the lake's gone calm, I want to dot the float right down. I've got some nice flat calm water in front of me where I can see my float. If it was windy, I'd like a bit of bristle showing. But today I'm going to dot it right down um, so I can see every bit of movement. If there's fish in my peg or someone's touching the rig, I want to see the movements, what's going on. I want to know there's fish in my peg. I don't want to sit there with a load of bristle showing, missing little indications or not knowing there's something in my peg. I want to talk to you about my shotting. So as you can see here, I've got, I'm using a 4x14 float, I've got seven number nines here. And this is just starting the float, probably about halfway down the bristle. But also, why I'm using this style of shotting, very simple. There's nothing to go wrong with this type of shotting. Um, I've picked shot as well. In the winter months I always prefer to use shot over stots, or cubes as you like to call them. But yeah, this is more of like a shirt button style. They're about three quarters of an inch between each other. Um, if I was using like, maggots or something like that, I'd, I'd spread them out a bit more just because I want to like slower fall. Because we're using pellets, I want to get my bait down to the bottom, I want my rig to settle straight away and I want to be fishing. If I was fishing with maggots or something like that where I'd want to like slower fall, um, let the fish see, but I want, I want the pellet to get straight down to the bottom and I want to be fishing straight away. Hook choice, Camasan B911 F1, hook I've been using for many years, well it's never let me down. And what they say, if it's not broken, don't change it. And this is what I've done with this hook. I've used it for many years, caught many F1s, silvers, car, foul up an odd carp as well, and also got them in. So when you, when you look at them matters, when you have caught a, a big 10 pounder in the tail and you've got it in, and if you, you have a lot of confidence, confidence on the hook then. And this is what it is for me. This is my hook choice for the winter months.